sit back and relax and enjoy the faithful do not yield. My name is Giovanni Bartosono. And I'm Michaela Bartosono. And this is The, the faithful, faithful Do Not, not yield. yield. When someone mentions the Holocaust, one would most likely think of the Jews in Germany and how they were hated because of their race. While this is true, they were not the only people persecuted during World War II. Another group of people, known as Jehovah's Witnesses, took a stand against Nazi assault and were put in concentration camps in Germany. Persecution of the Witnesses also occurred in the United States. During World War II, the persecution of Jehovah's Witnesses led them to take a stand for their faith in many different situations in both the United States and in Germany by continuing to remain faithful under harsh persecution and refusing to do anything contrary to their beliefs. Ha Hitler! Good morning, students. Good morning. Muller, come here. Why don't you greet me with Hal Hitler? Hal Hitler means that Hitler is my salvation. I believe that Jehovah God is my salvation. It would be against my conscience to say such a thing, sir. What? You pig! Get away from me, you stink! Farther away! Shame! A traitor! In 1933, school authorities began to require students to salute to Hitler many times throughout the school day. Students were surrounded by signs of swastikas, expected to participate in political activities, and were required to accept Hitler as their fear through pledges, poetry, and other forms of adulation. Students who were Jehovah's Witnesses were constantly forced to choose between their religious beliefs and school expectations. Most witness students were shamed, beaten, and harassed by their teachers and peers in school. The U.S. and German government saw the witnesses as threats because of their political neutrality and uncompromising faith. For this reason, witness students in the United States face similar injustice. Good morning, students. Before we begin class today, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag. Billy, go by this. We've been through this before. Why won't you pledge your allegiance and salute the flag? Put up your arm. I will not pledge my allegiance nor salute the flag because it violates my religious convictions, ma'am. I'm only trying to meet my God's standards. You and your sister Lillian are going to be expelled, and you will have no one to blame but yourselves. In 1935, Joseph Rutherford, the president of the Watchtower, Bible and Tract Society of Pennsylvania, stated that when one salutes the flag, he or she looks to it for their salvation when only God has the power to save. He said that the flag salute and the Hitler salute are both religious acts. So some witnesses in the United States stopped pledging their allegiance to the American flag. Billy and Lillian Gobitis were just two of the many Jehovah's Witnesses who were influenced by the speech to make the brave stand to not say the Pledge of Allegiance. Within a year later, the secret state police of Nazi Germany, or the Gestapo, conducted a mass arrest of Jehovah's Witnesses. But throughout the harsh persecution, the Jehovah's Witnesses stood firm in their beliefs. We were forced into concentration camps where they shaved our hair off. Yes, it is the right length. And we were given these blue and white striped uniforms to wear. We are barely fed and frequently worked. After we work long hours, we grow tired, and the guards would beat us. With every blow, they would shout, Do you still believe in Jehovah? By 1937, there was about 6,000 of us in the concentration camps. As Jehovah's Witnesses, we were made to wear an upside-down purple triangle as a way for them to identify us. It was just last week the Nazis had carried out their first public execution in the Sachsenhausen concentration camps in attempts for them to break us. 
We watched August Stigman get shot by seven SS men, and after the Commandant ordered us, Step forward if you have changed your mind about military service. But none of us recanted. Overall, the Commandant was never able to shatter our faith. On November 6, 1935, Charles E. Rudabush, the Minersville, Pennsylvania school superintendent, called for me to discuss why Lillian and Billy Gobitis would not salute the flag and expel both children. Billy and Lillian's father sued the Minersville School District for violating their First Amendment rights of the U.S. Constitution. The case advanced to the Federal District Court of Philadelphia and then to the Appellate Court, in which both courts sided with the Gobitis family. As patriotism increased, violence against the witnesses intensified. Mobs filled the streets where they burnt down the witnesses' places of worship, where they weren't even given a warning from the police. Hatred towards witnesses amplified as the Gobitis case reached the Supreme Court. <coughs> At this time, you may make your closing statements. The Gobitis children should have not been expelled and should be immediately readmitted into their school. Their freedom of religion has been violated by the Minersville School District. Justice needs to be served. The Supreme Court has come to a decision with an 8 to 1 ruling against the Gobitis family. We have made the decision to reverse the two lower court rulings, and that is final. National unity is the basis of national security. After the decision of the Gobitis case on June 3, 1940, there were two more crucial cases for the Jehovah's Witnesses who were fighting for religious freedom. In the Jones v. City of Opelika case, the Witnesses lost with a 5-4 ruling. Three of the Justices who had ruled in favor of the Witnesses had previously ruled against the Gobitis family. These three Justices came to a realization that the Gobitis case was wrongly decided. In 1943, the Opelika decision was annulled. A New York Times editorial stated, we think the rights of all Americans are a little safer because Jehovah's Witnesses have had their second day in court. The West Virginia State Board of Education versus Barnett case, much like the Gobitis case, later went to the Supreme Court. In 1943, a six to three decision was made in favor of the Barnetts and the Gobitis decision was reversed. The court decided that no officials had the right to force people to violate their personal beliefs. These court cases were not the only victories won by Jehovah's Witnesses. German forces attempted to break the Witnesses by demanding them to sign a document renouncing the religion for their freedom. This was actually a triumph for the Witnesses because refusing to submit to the Nazi regime only made their stand stronger. If you sign this, you will be freed. But if you don't, you'll be freed through the crematorium chimney and turned into a bar of soap. What is this? First, you will have to come to know that the International Bible Student Association is proclaiming erroneous teachings and under the cloak of religion follows hostile purposes against the state. Secondly, you, you want me to sacrifice my religion for freedom? If I sign this, I would be forced to betray all of my fellow witnesses and renounce the beliefs that I know to be true. Not only would I have to regard the Bible as false, but I would be forced to give up spreading its truth. I would be forced to join the war effort and to believe that the German government is the highest power. I cannot do this. I will not sign this declaration to satisfy Hitler's wrath. I will stand against this. I rather prove myself worthy to Jehovah God then bow down to a wicked human being. In Germany, over 20,000 Jehovah's Witnesses stayed active and never renounced their religion for their freedom. They stood strong against Nazi assault, and their faith helped them to do so. In the U.S., military service was expected of men, and those who did not comply were thrown into prisons. Jehovah's Witnesses remained loyal to their beliefs, and showed how indestructible their faith was. 
even in prisons. Let's go. You witnesses deserve to be thrown into prison for your unwillingness to fight for your country. What have I done wrong? If I deserve to be imprisoned, must I be punished for remaining loyal to my God? Throughout World War II, Jehovah's Witnesses held an unwavering position against persecution and Hitler's attempt to shatter their faith. They remained loyal to their faith and refused to abandon their beliefs, thus proving their unbendable stand against persecution in Nazi Germany. Their stand strengthened freedom of religion and moral beliefs in the United States. Americans' rights of religious freedom was strengthened from the stand that was taken by Jehovah's Witnesses all the way to the Supreme Court. As Supreme Court Justice Robert H. Jackson famously declared, If there is any fixed star in our constitutional constellation, it is that no official, high or petty, can prescribe what shall be orthodox in politics, nationalism, religion, or other matters of opinion, or for citizens to confess by word or act through faith therein. The, the faithful, faithful do, do not, not yield. yield.